Return early, return fast, and return as many times in your code as you need to. Yes, today we're talking about return statements, and we're gonna be talking about why this is better than this. In the early days of programming, it was often recommended to only have a single return statement within a function. This approach was often referred to as the single point of exit, and it was thought to enhance readability and maintainability of your code. You see, by having a single return statement, developers believed it would be easier to track the flow of execution and to handle any necessarily cleanup or resource management before exiting the function. But over the years, software engineering has evolved, and the languages that we write code in have evolved as well. Nearly everything is garbage collected automatically these days, so eventually, this approach began to throw up some limitations. Developers eventually realized that consolidating all return statements into a single point could sometimes lead to bloated and convoluted code structures like we've got here. As functions grew more complex, it became increasingly challenging to maintain a clear and concise logical flow. Debugging and understanding the code's behavior also became more difficult. You have to keep track of all these variables in your head when you're trying to work out the execution flow, and it's just a little bit stressful and hard to comprehend. So eventually, the concept of early returns gained traction as a new best practice. Early returns involved returning from a function as soon as a particular condition is met. So rather than waiting until the end of the function, you return whenever you can. So here, we're returning the string message as soon as our logic has determined that this is the correct result. And up here at the top, too, we're throwing an error as soon as that error condition has been met. You can think of an error a bit like a return statement because it does the same thing, essentially. It drops out of your code into the calling code. So if you look at the other example, this is an anti-pattern that used to be much more common than it is now, where developers would store an error object in a variable and then return it or throw it later on in the code. And this is bad by itself because this messes with the stack trace of the error object, but that's off the point. Early returns encourage breaking down complex logic into smaller, more manageable pieces, and that makes your code more readable, more maintainable, and less prone to errors. It also allows you to handle exceptional cases or edge conditions promptly, and that reduces the need for nested if-else statements, and that generally improves code readability. Look at these two if statements here. The top one has an if and an else, and then returns the value of this variable. The other example uses early returns. So by inverting that if condition and returning as soon as the condition is met, um, and it isn't possible to do this if you only have one return point in your function. You can see that this removes unnecessary indentation in your code editor, and that leads to more concise and more comprehensible code. Functional programming concepts and functional languages have contributed to the popularity of early returns. Functional programming emphasizes immutability and pure functions. Pure functions are where each function produces the same output for the same input, and it avoids any side effects. Early returns align well with these principles because they promote shorter and more focused functions that are easier to test, easier to reuse, and easier to compose into more complicated functions. Also, these days, most engineering teams are also working with some kind of agile framework, and agile encourages regular, small updates to your code base. So readability is key in agile because you might have to come back to this code in the next sprint, and so having code that can be easily read and understood by the future version of you is incredibly important when making iterations to your code base. This is only one thing that you can do to make your code cleaner and more readable, but there's a lot more you can do. So watch this video next about some of the ways that you can implement functional programming principles in your own code base. My name's James Charlesworth, and this is the Train to Code YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next one.